Now recording. Sorry for, the, sorry for the delay, folks. So, um, how is everybody today? Excellent. Good weekend? Good weekend, but time on Hey, break week next week. Not really. Not really. Not really. <laughs> We should talk about the assignment, actually. my password is so long is something we will be discussing in this course. <clears throat> so, assignment status. Assignment one was due on Sunday. Because of the late day policy in this course, you have until, um, technically speaking, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, midnight, to actually submit it. Um, if you want to use all three of your late days on this guy. Um, because we have four assignments and ten late days, that technically means that, like, to fully utilize them, you get, like, two per, and then two assignments you can use one on. Or, if you use if you get one late day in on this one, then you can do three late days for the remaining uh, three assignments. But uh, you kind of, like, no matter how you slice it, you get at least one late day on every assignment, just kind of for free. So, um, yeah, um, I do have most of the submissions, which is nice. But assignment one shall be due. Did you have a question? No? Put your hand up. No? Never mind then. Thought I saw a hand up. So, let's talk about assignment numero dos. <coughs> Arrays and files. So I am pleased to report that everything in this assignment is stuff that you already have done and know. So you may start immediately on assignment two. So, <coughs> The purpose of this assignment is to uh, produce a web application, or you guys will be doing the guts of a web application, which simulates an inventory management game, kind of in a sort of video gamey RPG style. Um, I have provided a link to my personal CS Unix account where you may find an operational copy of the assignment. Of course, you can't see any of the PHP because it's a server. Um, you'll just have to write the PHP yourself, which is good because that's the point. So here we are. You have a shop with an inventory and some uh, <coughs> AI generated art. Um, it's not putting artists out of work, because without it, the assignment wouldn't have art. There you go. Um, so I've got a number of these different shops. I've got a human, a dwarf, and a goblin, um, each with inventory. And um, basically, you've got a certain inventory yourself. The idea is to buy low. Right, adds to your inventory, then you go somewhere, it's considered more valuable, you sell it, and you make money. And that's kind of the idea of the game insofar as it's a game. Yes? Uh, is this like assignment one where you're going to give us the HTML and JavaScript and we'll just do the PHP? Oh, most assuredly, yes. Don't worry. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be given. This actually took me, uh, you know, not an inconsiderable amount of time to put together. I was uh, going to say, yeah, it'd be like. Uh, 
day and a half, two days to put the whole thing together, including the PHP. So, um, but you know, I was like, like it's, I like that shouldn't be reflective of the amount of time it takes you, because like I was doing a lot of front end work that you won't have to do, and I was doing some back end work that you also don't have to do, and like I started with completely unspecified, you know, I get I I didn't have an assignment sort of pointing me to what I should be okay. developing, right? So, you know, it takes a little more time to do something from scratch, but I think it's worth it. Um, so, in terms of the interface, this assignment revolves around managing files, right? So, I've given you a great gift. I've given you a reset button. So, how it works, the shop inventories are actually stored in, PA, uh, in uh, JSON files on the server. So, uh, if anybody else is like logged in, if, any, like, if anybody else visits this website, um, you will, basically you're competing with everybody else for the inventory. <laughs> uh, the inventory is globally shared in in, in JSON files, so anybody has access to it. Um, by this point, usually I see like this ticking down because somebody's logged in, but I guess not. Um, so, how it works, um, hopefully this recording is useful to people when they actually start doing the assignment, like, you know, 30 seconds before the deadline, three weeks from now. Um, there are files shop1, shop2, shop3.json. There are also files shop1, shop2, shop3.json.backup. If you modify the backup files, that's like modifying the permanent state. Right? That's because what the reset button does is links to a PHP script that simply copies the backup files in to the positions of the JSON files, thus overwriting them and clearing the memory. Um, this is useful and good because uh, this is file I.O. that you guys are doing, and it is entirely probable that you will be um, messing files up accidentally. So just click that button, resets the files on the server, and you can continue mucking about with them. There we go. So. Does that make sense so far? So far, so good? Demonstration of the reset button. Boop. There it's back. So, number two. We have not yet studied sessions. So it's not possible for us to manage the player inventory on the server. At the moment, the player inventory is kept track of and managed on the client, which means that you can somewhat hilariously uh, do the following. Inspect uh, console player goal is equal to a very large number. And it doesn't automatically kick in. You have to like call the routine that populates it. But if you switch shops, you can see you have an awful lot of gold. All right. Um, so basically, if you find yourself in a position where like you want to test functions that are, you know outside the usual scope, you can actually play with the data here from the JavaScript console, see how the server reacts to it. Make sense? So far so good? Good. So, for this assignment, you will be required to produce four PHP files. These are like well, five if you count me.php, which is just, you know, five marks for being able to state your name. Never say I'm not generous. Um, 
There are four PHP scripts that you will have to write that fill in the guts of this application. The first, requestinventory.php. All this one does is it echoes back the contents of one of those JSON files while sanitizing it. All right? There's an incoming get parameter that tells you which shop should be activated. There's a handy little thing here telling you which file you want. Right? And basically it's select the file that you return based on the incoming get parameter. You know, that one is that one should be relatively simple. Sorry. Is it, is it requesting from all, the, all three of the shops or just one of the shops? It will always only request from one shop at a time. Um, so, oh, I should have done like a little highlight thing on the nav bar to show you which shop you're at. Well, it's too late now. Um, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. But um, I just want to point out that little guy right there. So, yeah, so you only have to return the inventory from one shop at a time because you're only displaying one shop at a time. Make sense? Um, so the, op the purpose of the first PHP script is to generate that table. Now, you don't have to generate the table You'll notice there's like a thing for buttons here, which is not your responsibility, right? What, uh, basically all you have to do is send the JSON of the inventory to the client, and the client will render the table. Make sense? Sure. Good, hello. So, that being said, um, Sorry, say that one more time. You said render to the JSON file. So, the contents of the JSON file, yes. if you just echo those contents back to the client, the table will render automatically. You are not responsible for the design or rendering of this table. Merely sending a JSON with like description is, you know, well, actually, this is two fields. This is name, this is description in the, uh, in the JSON. This is like price, I believe, is the JSON tag. Quantity is quantity. There's a hidden one that doesn't appear here called ID as well. Each item has an ID number. But uh, yeah, making sense so far? Any questions? Any other questions? Is it, is it creating variables for all of those uh, and then echoing those all back? Is that what? Let me show you the actual JavaScript. That's the fun thing is because you have access to the client code, you actually have access to all of my JavaScript. Um, although you do uh, anyway. So please um, take a look. So request inventory. This is the one, this is the fetch request that actually calls the first question, right? Populate inventory is the, uh, the function that calls. Here it is. So data is the data that's received from the server. Um, you can see I was like trying some stuff. Um, more down here. So you can see I'm looping over data and I'm getting price, quantity, um, name and description, right? There's one more that's not here, which is called ID, um, but that is used. I'm attaching that information to the button object, which it then retrieves in order to be able to send 
what the uh, what the item ID number is that you're requesting to buy or sell. So, yeah, and basically the same code generates the player's inventory as well, just with like one boolean swap. But you don't necess you don't have to worry about the JavaScript. You only have to worry about the the, uh, the PHP, right? So, so much for question number one. Question number two, <coughs> request item value. So the way that the game works is you don't, like, each shop will pay a different amount of money for each item, right? That way you can buy low at one shop, sell high at another, make money, that's the object of the game, right? So, there is a CSV file which is stored on the server called itemvalues.csv, which gives you the item value uh, for each shop. Basically, it, you can think of it as, as a, a two dimensional array. Um, your columns are item ID numbers, your rows are shops, and um, you just pick the right value out of the out of the table and fire that back to the client and it populates a table with it. Right? So yeah, in the player's inventory, sell price right here, that is derived from uh, e like each time that comes from an Ajax call. We can buy some stuff. There we go. Now I've got some inventory. Um, you can see the sell prices are like the sale prices are different based on what shop you're at. See the sale prices have changed, right? So that functionality that is question two, getting this column to work, sell price. Make sense? So far so good. Any questions? Good. So then we have question three, buy item.php. Um, this is the guts of purchasing an item from a shop. So there are a couple of checks that have to be run. Does the player have enough gold to purchase the item? Um, you know, general like packet sanitization stuff, does it have the right incoming parameters, etc. Um, when the player purchases an item, if that item is in the shop, like if the item is in the shop's inventory and the uh, player has enough money, if quantity is greater than one, it reduces quantity by one and then returns the JSON string for that item. If quantity is one, it removes that item from the shop's JSON file. So um, by modifying things on the client, you can actually get the, uh, the items to have like different descriptions and values and that sort of thing. Although sell price is fixed. So, um, does that make sense? This one's a bit harder because this is not just reading data. The previous two questions were only reading data that's on the server. Um, question one, generally. Question two, a bit more specifically. This requires you to actually put, date, put changes back onto the server. So this is where you have to do a write operation as well. All right? Uh, when you said that uh, the cell the selling is kind of static. Did you mean for each specific shop? The sell, the sale price is fixed in the CSV file. Okay. You have to go into the server to modify the CSV file. Okay. Whereas, like for example, if I was in so inclined, in my JavaScript console, I could say um, um, player inventory at uh, zero dot description is equal to mm, 
Now, if I refresh by going to a different page, I can do that. And um, if I sell that, that gets actually stored on the server. Right? So that's why, <laughs> that's why A, sanitize, 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 and B, that's why I gave you a reset button. What? 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 Get out. Get out. No. Where? Get out. Get out. Well, that's going to date the video, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, question number four is selling an item. So, in the case of selling an item, you are taking the JSON string from the inventory and you are writing that into the, uh, the appropriate JSON. This is a little bit trickier, particularly um, with respect to, like, like if you're interpret if you're doing it like slightly incorrectly, um, like it's easy enough to remove something from a file. Like that's easier than adding something, right? Like mm -hmm. reducing the quantity va value by one, trivial, right? Getting new data to uh, you know, incorporate itself into your existing JSON, slightly more tricky. Certainly not impossible, but you have to like pay attention to certain things um, that otherwise you don't have to pay attention to in question three. So question four is a little bit harder. It's worth five mm -hmm. more points. But um, mm -hmm. if I'm going to make a recommendation, I'll make two recommendations for this assignment. Mm -hmm. Number one, do the questions in order. Questions, uh, code from previous questions will help you in later questions, right? Like the code in question one, which allows you to select a JSON based on what the incoming shop number is, you will need that in questions one, three, and four, right? So keep it around. <laughs> Maybe even externalize it. But um, yeah, does that make sense? Piece of advice number two. Two, don't wait until the day before the due date to start up. I know this is like very general like advice your dad would give you, but it's still true. Um, for this one, let's talk due date. 27th. The 27th is correct. So basically, I'm giving you two weeks to work on it plus reading week. Right? So, it's been assigned, you've got this week, reading week, and then the following week to complete the assignment. It's due on the 27th, and then on the 28th we have our midterm. Oh, we had to have it sometime. So, I, I, I actually do. I'm contractually obligated to give you a midterm. Oh, yeah. Um, it's in the uh, it's in the course outline, so I have to do it. Um, by so, the, by the way, which AI did you use for the picture generation? It's actually like pretty good. Um, this is this is Doll E. You get two Dull free cracks at it through ChatGPT per day. No. Yeah. So, no, that's not Doll E. No, I mean it's not. Oh, I asked for that. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I actually, in my prompt, I said I want an anachronistic, uh, um, like, uh, sales terminal inside of the medieval shop as an element of humor and whimsy. I mean, it seems like very symmetrical. Like even, even the human being is like, you know what I mean? Like it's usually, really they, good, usually yeah. like forms like ears weird and then the hands coming sizes. out of each other. It's like, like that's pretty accurate. I find if you ask for pixel art, it does 
pretty well with pixel art. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, for some reason, pixel art it does better than most other things. But I just I love the um, I love the tip jar that just contains swords. It's just swords. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, you know, it, it does interesting things like put things over top of things weirdly. You know, um, I think this is a bit more evident in the, this one. Um, like you can kind of tell that like this one's at a slightly different like pixel resolution than this one. You know, the pixels are a little bigger, but not enough to make it like really obvious. You know, um, some of these items like are I don't even know what that is supposed to be. Is that like a flamethrower gun from the future? I don't know. Um, I think you put that there. So. Yeah. Uh, also, like in some cases, the uh, the swords are like. Like, like, I don't know what's going on with this guy. You know? Is that a hammer? Is that a sword? Yeah, that is it a broken like, off sword? It looks like an axe. Yeah. It's an axe head that's broken off. Yeah. It looks like an axe head that's broken off, but the broken off part is one of these, which would be the worst axe imaginable. Um, I don't care how thick your gauntlets are. Um, this one, though, I was really impressed. Aside from, like, the daggers just kind of floating in in the drawers. Um, it, I think it did pretty well. Like it got the daggers like oriented on the sort of perspective of the the counter pretty well. Like it's a little off, but it's pretty good. I'm not sure what that is, so I just kind of imagined it to be a mobile person, you know, because of eye eye mouth. You know. But um, yeah, it did pretty good. You know, it does the lighting well. Yeah, the light yeah. is also like pretty accurate with the shadows. And look, the correct number of fingers. And that's that's impressive. Yeah. See, now that's impressive for me. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, it's I, you know, I wanted you know I wanted I wanted this assignment to be a little bit fun, you know, so. I also, I also put some jokes into the item descriptions. Like this one. Is that Mega Three Wins reference from SpongeBob, or am I tripping? Oh, Maybe, nah, oh I mean, Maybe. it might be SpongeBob did something at some point. Yeah. You know, it's it's from one of the older movies. It's like if Patrick has a bag of wind, he just like lets it's it go. And, oh. you, guys, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? They escape the hassle. Y yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> May uh, I? I was actually like the thing that I had in my brain was that like absolutely terrible item from like two Smash Brothers games ago that just blows you off the stage. Oh my god, oh, yeah. It just, I, yeah, you have to turn that one off. Elbows. That was hilarious yeah. to play. That's from Zelda. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man. Anyway. It's, it's so funny when you're using it, but like, it's miserable to play. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's, it's just fury, it's just for the purpose of fury. Yeah. Like there's no, there's no, it's the, there's no skill. There is, there's no, yeah, there's no skill in it. It's well, just. I mean, if you're going to play with items on, you may as well have all of them on. I mean. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh. Uh, no items, all thoughts. There, I said it. Uh. <laughs> okay, for the good games, too. Um, yeah, exactly. The only good Smash Brothers games. Nah, I'm kidding. The other ones aren't, aren't terrible. But come on. Melee is the best one. It's true. It's true. You can't deny it. Alright. So, um, all that being all that being the case. Very good. Any further questions about assignment two? <coughs> Again, please get started on it before the deadline. Please, 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 please. you guys were going to get uh, was, you know the, uh, the final assignment in, um, in uh, JavaScript, yeah. where like, you've got all the Pokemon? Um, oh yeah, and then you have to like, try to 
I, I know what you mean, like it randomizes between different. Yeah, like yeah, get three Im different random images. Yeah. images. Yeah. Uh, assignment two used to be just do the server side for that assignment. So. I mean, yeah, so I think my assignment is a bit oh, harder, but better. more interesting, hopefully. I mean, it's all, you're kind of fortunate that you're in my section, because I'm the one doing the assignment. I'm probably going to be writing most of the midterm questions, and I will be doing midterm questions based on the things I discuss in class, because I am not in the other classes, am I? You know? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, you've got, you've got, uh, you've got, uh, professor more privilege right here. Don't, don't abuse it, okay? Um, but I, I mean, I also, I also like video record and upload, and I'm sure that people in other sections are watching the videos, because like, I'm getting like views in the hundreds on these videos. Yeah. 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 Yes? I saw like, one K one of your, was it? It was like a game video. Oh yeah, the trailer for my game, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're like, I was a little surprised because, like, uh, I think there's probably on the order of, like, 250, 300 students registered in the course. I always, I'm always surprised when I get, like, more views than there are people in the course, you know? Sometimes happens. I guess people are watching it multiple times and coming back to it or something, but anyway. So the topic of today's actual talk and lesson, um, it is a shorter topic, which is kind of nice. But it is file uploads. So we are going to learn how to take a file from the user and store it on our precious, precious server. This may seem like a bad idea, and it is, uh, but it is also a necessary thing to do because, you know, people got to have their avatar pictures. So, you know, here we go. Obviously, it's used a lot more than that. Um, anybody here managed to get through the uh, diploma program so far without submitting any assignments? Anybody just that good? You get by on your task scores alone? No? So all of you have seen the file upload dialog then, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be doing that. Yeah. I mean, you 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 can though. I'll show you how. I'll show you how. But let me let me let me do a little. Uh, we'll, so, in this particular case, I know that we're kind of this is server side, and we're trying not to do any client side, but we need to do just a little bit of client side on this one. Um, <coughs> Because, oh wow, oh man, once again, is your password a sequence? I mean, all passwords are sequences unless they're one character. <laughs> I'm not giving you information about my password. <laughs> However, I will give you, like, a secure means of constructing a password once we start talking about passwords, once we start talking about <laughs> sessions, and when we talk about password hashing. But basically the reason that it's so long is because each additional character vastly increases the complexity that it, of the amount of time that it takes to break the password. There's a very, very good computer file video about it, which I'm going to assign as homework at some point. So let's get VS Code and XAMPP launched already, if, if, you, if you don't have it already, which probably everybody does, but you know. Open folder. XAMPP. htdocs. Make a new folder. Week six. 
or perhaps we want to make it week six because this is the week before the break, break week, so everybody's just feeling a little, you know. So, puns. Let's make a new file, call it upload.php. Is this good? You can see it in the back. Is this appropriately magnified? Yeah, that's very good. Okay. good. So, we have to do a little bit of HTML. There is a form element that they haven't taught you yet that I will now teach you. And it is the file upload thing that you all know and love. So let's make this a proper web page. I'll put my PHP hat at the top, just like that. So we need form. In this case, I'm going to have the form target its uh, target the uh, the PHP file on which the form is. So action is equal to upload.php. So method. Would anybody care to take a guess, take a wild guess, what type of method is appropriate for file uploads? A get? Or post? Uh, you got it from my face, my face, yeah, right? Post. I'm gonna yeah. post. So if you were going with get, you would have to encode a file in the URL, okay. right? Like possible for small ones. Okay, but bigger, bigger projects we have to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do any <laughs> file that way, basically. Right? Makes sense. Yep. So we are going to be doing method post. There's one more that we need in order to make this work, and that is encoding type. And um, I can never remember it all the way through, so if I'm doing this, you can do this too. Encoding type, multi-part form data. Like that. Ink type. <coughs> type stands for encoding type. Basically all this tells us is that the slots are done. <laughs> Can I disable it? Uh, no. you, wait, if you right click it, I think you can take it off yeah, the task bar. Can. can you not? Um, yes. Yeah, you uncheck one of those. Views and interests. Views and interests. Yeah. Turn off. Open on Google. Well, right, turn on that off. Uh, I mean, just or just get rid of it entirely yeah. because I don't need to know the weather. Got windows. I mean, it's good to know the weather because you can prepare. <laughs> I mean, yeah, PHP doesn't run smoothly when it's raining outside. So. It's good to know the weather, but if you're near a window, you know what the weather is. Well, yeah, but the weather will tell you if there's a hurricane or something coming. <laughs> But that's not even tell you if something, yeah, right? That's just telling you what it currently is, you know? The weather reports usually report on that? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure the college would report that faster than the world believes climate change is a deal, so I'm pretty sure somebody would say EPA that there's Anyway, like, once again, the news tab has inserted unwanted political discussion into my classroom. This is a non-political space. We do not discuss politics. We discuss programming. So, programming over politics, P over P. Yes, we are a pop classroom. So, um... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 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 so, 
So we need to add the input type to the form. I don't know, saying that the classroom is a political and a political free space is also probably a political position. Uh, I just don't care anymore. No, false, all of the above. Just wanting to be left alone is apparently a political position too. So we need input type is equal to, you might be able to guess it. File. That's right. We now need to also give the file a name. Name is, let's just be boring and call it file one. We will also need a submit button. Input type is equal to submit. Name is equal to, or not name, value is equal to submit that file. Let's throw a break in there, or maybe not. Maybe this is fine. All right, let us see how this renders. seen these before. Yes. So, um, let's grab a file, shall we? So, What's a what's a what's a comedy animal? What's a good comedy animal? Clownfish. Clownfish, yeah. A duck. Silly goose. Oh, silly goose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. There we go. I think this is like. A reference. Whoa. 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 That's quite the file name you got there. <laughs> so, if you uh, if you examine the file name, oh, I'm sorry. There's just a little line there that makes it look like a dollar sign, but it's not actually a dollar sign. I think. I think that is a dollar. It looks like a super global in PHP. I don't think it is. At any rate, I'm going to rename it. Is it? Is it? Is it, is it possible to tax it one Oh, we're going to get to it. It is a dollar sign! Yeah. Well, isn't that interesting? I'm just going to rename it uh, Goose. Goose, geese. Geese are great comedy animals. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get into it. So, uh, downloads, goose, open, submit that file, baboon. So we can submit the file. If we take a look in the form data, or, or sorry, in the, uh, in the network data, you can see that we have file one, which is binary. Um, and that's all it's going to tell you about it. So, if you've been paying attention to the class so far, you may think, ah, we are receiving things via post. Therefore, I should look in the post superglobal for this thing. And you'd be wrong. There's actually a special super global for files. Anybody care to guess what it's called? Super file. No. <laughs> it is called files. That's right. 
complete. Nice and boring, just the way we like things. So, files is our superglobal that contains data given to us about files. So let's take a look. The file superglobal is a bit like the host superglobal, but it is an associative array pointing to other associative arrays. So we have file 1 and then another associative array with file details. If we were uploading multiple files, we would have multiple names and multiple uh, description strings. Does that make sense? Yep. So far so good? Uh, it's easy enough to attach multiple files, you just uh, put more file inputs in the form. And then, as long as they don't have conflicting names, off they go. Make sense? So, let's take a look at some of these fields. We have our name, goose.jpg. We have a type which is very important, image slash jpeg. By the way, that's an escaped forward slash character. Temporary name. This is possibly the most important one. This is where the file is actually located on disk. Error indicates whether there was an error during processing. And size is the file size, I believe, in kilobytes. Sound good? Any questions? We will be using a lot of these today. So, but first, a word from our sponsors. No. Let's take a look at what the file upload process actually consists of. So, You have your you have your client. You have your server, right? So let's say that the client is uploading a file with a little happy face. Happy. Dot .png. So, let's examine a little bit the structure of the server's directories. Your PHP will be stored in a folder where you put it, obviously. But for the, uh, you know, from the perspective of the PHP script as running, we will call this the working directory, right? Or WD for short, working directory. Inside of the working directory, you have, um, well, you have your PHP script. But let's say that you also want an images folder. I am G. And let's say that your goal is to get this file into this folder. Right? So, this is not where PHP automatically dumps the thing. It doesn't know what, PH what PHP script is executing uh, when it receives the file. It doesn't know where that working directory is. It doesn't know anything. It just knows, I have a file. I need to put it somewhere. So the server has another directory 
called temporary, TMP. This, uh, the location of this folder is actually configurable. Um, it is into this folder that our happy.png file is placed. So the route it follows is into the server, down into the temporary folder. Now, when it gets stored in the temporary folder, it is stored with a randomized file name. Something like phpa389.temp, where these are kind of random hexadecimal digits. Okay? So, when we take a look at the temporary name, you will see that that matches this format, right? So the question is, why? Why is that necessary? The answer may surprise you, but does anybody want to take a guess? Why does the, beep, why does the server rename the file? Always the hard drive. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes? Um, possibly just because it's a temporary location, so you need like a temporary memory address, and it's easier to locate it in like the PHP access mode. Mm. So that's coming closer to, um, like that brings up a good point, but not the one I was thinking of. So. The temporary, like temporary files are temporary. That means that periodically the server goes it and goes through and deletes them. Right? So the server doesn't know what you're doing, right? It has no idea where like what your directory structure you've designed is, right? It has its own. It keeps its own so that it knows where to find the files it needs to delete. So that's one thing. That's true. But why rename in that case? D T A Directory Traversal Attack. It's a security thing. So, let's imagine, just for the sake of interest, the incoming file name was not happy.php, uh, uh, happy.png, sorry, it was something like slash dot dot slash uh, um, mischief.png. Does anybody remember what these two dots do in a Linux environment? Tell them to go back up one folder, up one directory. That's right. So, if you take this and you're appending your sort of, um, oh, I'm out of space. Here, I'll put it up here. If you're doing like, you know, the location that you want to save the file, for instance, which is working directory, it would be something like home directory slash public HTML slash uh, working directory slash image. Um, there, 
right? Yeah. Actually, what you'd do is you'd have the slash here and not there. But that's okay. Concatenate those two together, right? So it's like if you have public HTML, um, then working directory, your intention is for it to end up here, but it actually pops it one level above. Your file upload is copied to the working directory, not the images folder. Now, okay. So it's in the wrong place. The website won't be able to find it. Fine. Here's a question. What if the file name was something like uh, this? Will it overwrite the servers styles plus names? Yes. This overwrites styles.css, which is a quite a common name for a CSV or for a CSS file, right? overwrites it in the working directory. So the, uh, you know, a certain amount of mischief can occur that way. Not to mention, unless you've had your original file backed up somewhere, you've lost it, right? It's been overwritten. Okay, that's bad. How about this one? PHP will let you do this. It because like once the file once the file has been loaded into memory, right? Um, modifying it mid session won't actually change it mid session, right? Um, so that would be pretty serious. <laughs> Because basically what that means is that you can get your web, your web page loaded whole cloth on somebody else's server. Right? Wait, so this would basically re uh, overwrite their HTML, but we also have PHP in ours because it's in there? Well, is that what you mean? this makes the assumption that um, the page <coughs> that loaded the website was index.php. Right? Oh, okay. If it was index.html, then you'd have a PHP file and an HTML file, and I don't know which one the server would pick in that case, actually. Um, okay. Maybe the HTML file. But yeah, so basically what this would do is rather than just writing it into the working directory, it would write it over top of your existing index.php file, thus destroying your web page and replacing it with a facsimile. And if you are clever when you do this, you will do it so that it looks like the original, um, but, uh, you know, redirects all credit card information to, you know, ev evilperson.nasty's web server. Um, so yeah, this is called a directory traversal attack. So, they are trickier to pull off than just a reflected XSS attack, right? Um, personally, I'm not set up on this computer to be able to perform one because these two dot characters are disallowed in file names, right? In any conventional operating system, you can't name a file this because like, that's going to cause parsing problems, right? The same reason that this is a problem here would make this a problem in the operating system itself, right? But, once it's been encoded in an HTTP packet, that's just a string, right? So if you are able to intercept an HTTP packet, insert these three characters 
you know. That's all you need to do to get the file somewhere it's not supposed to be. You've got to do more than that to be destructive, of course. But um, so this sort of thing is certainly possible with a man in the middle attack. Um, you guys know how man in the middle attacks work? You want to have, like a brief overview? Yes. Like in this instance, file, some hacker comes in the middle, takes it, puts it somewhere it's not supposed to be, or like messes with it. So. Yes. Uh, roughly speaking, yeah. Um, does, it, uh, is any, does anybody want me to go through it? Yes. Uh, is, it, is it basically like what we did uh, a couple of, uh, a couple of lessons ago, where Hunter basically stole session cookies? No, that's a different thing. Um, that didn't require a man in the middle of uh, that didn't require any of the packets to be intercepted. Okay. Right. All that. Uh, so the way that Hunter stole the session cookie was he got. Um, he got, uh, what, what was the old lady's name? In Gertrude. 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 Um, all he did was get Gertrude's uh, browser to load and execute some JavaScript from his server by requesting it through the regular means. It did not require, um, like the in was because she, picked, she clicked on a bad link. Um, in this, in the case of a man in the middle attack, the in is um, someone owns a network node and they're monitoring the traffic on that network node and they are, you know, performing some nefarious schemes with that network traffic. So, um, <clears throat> so normally, right, when I draw these, when I do these diagrams, I'm kind of approximating the actual internet, right? How things actually look on the internet is you have a network of nodes, right? Node, 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 Although it will, of course, try to find the most direct route through the, uh, through the uh, internet to the server, a packet will pass through many nodes on its way, too. Um, it's unknown how many packets it will travel through. All right? Can it travel to multiple? Like, at the same time? You'd have to ask a networking person. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of, like, up against the limits of of my knowledge on this one. Um, I would have to watch more computer file videos, basically. So basically, if this node in the middle was owned by a skull and crossbones, right? When packets travel through your node, the node can see the entire packet, right? Every node can copy the packet that traveled, any packet that travels through all of the packets that travel through a node, right? So what saves you from interference is the fact that the packet payloads are encrypted. But let's ask ourselves a question, a, a question about that. One, how does encryption work? And two, how does packet encryption work? So, number one, how does encryption work? Hey? With algorithm. With an algorithm, yes, you need an algorithm, but you also need... Contemporary. Nope. A key? A key, yes. So, to perform encryption, you need a secret key, right? Anybody who has the key and knows the encryption algorithm can decrypt the packet, right? So, um, you guys need this, or can I erase it? Yeah. Anybody want to take a picture? Good.
So this is an older way. Uh, this is an older standard for HTTP. Um, like modern HTTP is more complicated than this and solves some of the problems, but um, you, this is like simple enough that I can explain it in class without it being too long a tangent. So let's imagine ser client-server communication, right? So over here we've got the client. Over here we have the server. So the question is, given that both the client and the server need to have the same encryption key, how does it decide what that encryption key is? Right? So, the client initiates communication because the client always initiates communication. It sends to the server a sync signal. Right? It's like, I wish to initiate communication with you pretty please. Yeah. Is, this, is this where it's like sync acknowledge? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They did this in, with you guys in no, like... No, 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 this is just, uh, I, I've done a little bit of networking myself. Yeah. Sure. Um, again, this is probably out of date, but it's sufficient knowledge for all of these guys. <laughs> um, you don't have to be up on the latest standards, you just have to, you know, you have to acknowledge the possibility that such attacks can exist, right? So, synchronize, the server then sends back another synchronized plus acknowledgement. So, once that happens, the client sends back another acknowledgement. So, the client says, give me an encryption key, please. The server says, I have received your message, here you go, here is your encryption key. Then the client says, I have received your message, here is my acknowledgement of your message. After that, client sends HTTP request, server says it sends HTTP response. Right? So, the encryption key is sent here and used here so that these are encrypted. Right? Obviously not the header. The header is necessary for the network infrastructure to know routing, right? So the header is never encrypted, but the payload is encrypted using the key that's sent in this middle transaction. So, the question is, if we have our red marker of doom, the hacker, let's say that this, through this communication, it passes through the hacker's node. Hacker then gets the encryption key. If the response, uh, if the request and the response also travel through the node, the hacker can use the encryption key to decrypt the packet, modify it, and then re-encrypt it. And so long as he can do that faster than the packet timeout, right? Well, packet timeout here on the response, actually, and because, you know, presumably there's some, like, there's some amount of time here that the server will wait before it's like, oh, this packet's being interfered with, I'm going to drop this whole thing, right? So, as long as you're inside of that timeout, you can pick the, pick the packet up, encrypt it, unencrypt it, make some modifications inside of it, re-encrypt it and send it back out to the server, right? And there's no way for the server to know that this has happened. 
and there's no way for the client to know that this has happened. This is your classic man-in-the-middle attack. Does that make sense? So who do we never, ever, ever trust? Client, client. That's right, because even if you think that the client, the client is trustworthy, because it's all, it's all Mrs. Marbles. She's just an old lady. She doesn't know how to hack. She barely knows how to open her email. You know, just because the packet is originating with a senior citizen does not mean that a that a hacker doesn't own one of the network nodes. Right? Um, when we're submitting our assignments, if they ever require like uh, file submissions or anything of the sort, are you going to try breaking it using stuff like this? Um, I wouldn't try a directory traversal attack, but what I would do is I, you know, um, I'd probably I, I I'll, I'll do a manual inspection of the code to make sure that you're not doing something stupid that would result in a directory traversal attack. Okay. And the best way to do this is through sanitization or. Just don't use the file name to get you. Okay. Okay, okay. Right? This, right? The, okay, so tying it back to the original lesson, the whole reason that PHP assigns a temporary randomized file name uh, and doesn't use the original is because the original might contain a directory traversal attack. So the randomized, the random digits guaranteed safe. Right? So that's why it does that. Any questions? So the, uh, doesn't Windows like prevent you from naming a file with like dots in it anyway? Well, yes. But if you're dealing with a man in the middle attack scenario, yeah. like your entire packet is a string. Right? So all you have to do is find the place in the packet where it has like the file name. And then, like, say, you know, happy.png, right? And then all you have to do is insert your little directory traversal right in there, right? Or just throw that in, out entirely, find the binary file, yank that out, put your own in, you know. Um, Basically, when you're modifying a packet, you are not under the constraints of the operating system's naming conventions, right? So yes, I agree. Not possible to create a file name on your system that is a tra directory traversal attack. Um, and believe me, if I could do it, I would show you, right? Um, but you know, if you're intercepting and interfering with packets, then certainly uh, you can do that. And it also doesn't necessarily need to be a man-in-the-middle attack. I imagine like, it would be absolutely possible to write some kind of like, middleware for your own client that intercepts the packet on your own machine and makes any modifications that you want. So like, the, the directory traversal attack could, in theory, also <coughs> originate from the client's machine, right? Because basically you're just intercepting the packet before it even leaves your computer, right? Rather than in the middle of the network, which is much harder, you know. Because if like if you were to make like uh, you know a packet interference add-on for your browser, you know, presumably you could get access to the encryption key without having to you know do this shenanigans. Does that make sense? Okay. Good. itself can't be encrypted because what encryption key would you use to encrypt the encryption key that you're sending? Exactly. You end up in a situation where, well, you establish another handshake, another handshake operation to establish that encryption key. It's okay. Well, what establishes that one? Right? And that's just an infinite regression of handshakes and nobody ever actually 
like no business has ever actually done, which is actually a pretty good description of what that's networking has done. Ironically enough. So, anyway. So the file ends up being stored at a temporary location. In order to use the file for our purposes, we want to copy it into one of our, uh, some directory relative to our working directory. So, first we'll need one. Let's make a new directory. Image. There we go. There is a command, there is a function, which permits you to copy the file. It's uh, copy up, or uh, what is it? Move uploaded file. There we go. Move uploaded file. Takes two parameters, from and to. We will move from the temporary location stored in the files super global. Files, you'll have to know the name of the file that you're moving. Like, the, not the file name, but like the parameter name. Which, which name did it have in the HTML form? In our case, it was file one. At temp name, T-M-P underscore N-A-M-E. That is our source. The destination is where we want to copy it to. So for now, let's just say um, images slash um, oh, this one, correct slash, um, newest dot, whatever. Well, dot is a question, actually. So if we're uploading image files, giving it the wrong file extension may give the browser the wrong impression. So what we need to do is we need to preserve the uh, the name. Uh, the, or sorry, we need to preserve the file extension. So the file extension is stored in echo files at file one at Type. It's image slash JPEG. I'm going to put a frame in there. There we go. So I'm going to use a clever little trick. You'll notice that this is a slash separated list, and we want the final one. There is actually a function, uh, both in PHP and in Bash and other in, uh, related environments, probably Python as well, called base name. Have you guys used base name before? Sorry, was that a yes or a no? No, sir. OK, well. Prepare to have your mind exploded. So, if you call base name, uh, what it is essentially doing is it's just taking the file name and ignoring all the directories. So, for example, if I print temp name as well. In the case of 
base name on this guy, I get just JPEG. In the case of base name on temp, I get just that bit, which is useful. That's useful. Um, so, if I assign this to type, and then concatenate, or I suppose I could just do the PHP thing. That will uh, hopefully work and be uh, relative to all file extensions. So let's try her one more time. There we go. Let's see how she did. There we go. And of course, this is Windows, so view your file extensions. So there you have it. Mine says dot plane. Dot plane? Yeah, P L A I N. P L A I N. Hmm. Strange. Did you. Um, it wasn't an image, I just did a TXT file. Was the TXT file named plane? No, it was called uh, file to upload. I, I literally just called it like file. Strange. <laughs> Let me see. Here, show me your directory. Oh yeah, because um, it'll be like uh, text slash plane. This oh, works for images. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, because you did you did plain text, like you mean with nothing in the TXT file? Let me let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. So, let's say yeah. Yeah. file save as in documents as the here we go choose file. Documents. There we go. Submit. See that the type is text slash plain. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. So this is like just for images. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Um, one other fun thing about base name. If you specify a file suffix, it removes it. So, for example, if we wanted to make it so that we didn't have just this name, this fixed name that everything gets copied to, but we wanted to use that temporarily assigned name, but we wanted to fix the file extension. You'd do it like this. Name is equal to base name of the temporary name, excluding .tmp, then name .type. There we go. Choose file. Let's do the uh, picture again. And submit. And if we take a look in our folder, we have to kind of go back and go in again. You can see. I'm now using the temporarily the temporary PHP names as permanent names, which means I'm saving one copy of everything that's uploaded instead of overwriting. Make sense? Uh, from here, it's reasonably easy to do something like the following. Throw in a little if statement in PHP. If 
is set. Files super global at file one. That is, did we receive a file? Throw in an image tag, source being name doc type. Perhaps a little uh, page three, your uploaded image is. Your uploaded image is ready, sir. Your uploaded image is ready, sir. So, boop, off, oh. scandalous. Oh yeah, I forgot the, I forgot the directory. No, it's images, it's in images, right? There you go. Whoa. Okay. So we're just gonna throw a little of uh, this with our style equals width is 200 pixels. There you go. So if we just go to the website, you know, it's complaining. If we upload the file, it complains less. Neat, huh? Interesting. Any questions? You want to see the code again? Yes, sir. Do you guys want this code or the code above? This code, both. Both. Okay, we'll start here for. We'll 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 start with this one. Yes. <laughs> you guys want to see the rest of the code now? Or are you still working on this one? Sorry? Could you repeat your question a bit louder, please? So, I'm so happy you asked this question. This is actually a review from a uh, few weeks ago. Um, you can actually split PHP tags like this. Um, all the PHP tag means is turn interpreter on, and here, 
turn interpreter off. When it's not in PHP mode, it's in HTML mode. Right? So, interestingly enough, you can set things like if statements in and have them toggle like actual honest to goodness HTML code. So, you can also do this with loops. We had a couple of examples earlier on where we like generated a bunch of like list items from data in PHP by using a loop. But uh, yeah, any other questions? You want to see the rest of the code? Yes? Good. All right. save you because the name that we're pulling here is the random string, yep. right? So there's no way that a DTA could get in through that, right? Yep. Um, the type, like we're not even pulling type, the type from the, uh, from the file name as uploaded. So, you know, the, um, the user has control over the file name, they have control over the contents of the file, but a lot of this stuff, like, they don't have control over, so the preference is to use information they don't have control over most of the time, as far as is possible. Uh, and one more thing, uh, in one of your files you said that um, you're saving uh, the original as well as the temporary that we had saved. Like, uh, it contained the goose, the txt, and then the two other gooses. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, so that original, isn't that what the user uploaded, meaning that it's still technically malicious? Or am I, am I wrong in assuming that? So, things can be malicious, but unless they're activated as malicious, that it's like, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, I got these images from the internet. It had a rather suspicious looking file. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a virus, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, um, so the reason that it's doing this is it's now like, because the file name is randomized, every time that script gets run, a new image with a new name will appear in this directory. For example, oh, okay. confirm form resubmission, continue. Go back to the folder, go out, go in again because this is stupid Windows. Ah, you can see I've done it a bunch more times, actually. Um, so there you go. Good question. So, let's talk safety. Here are the types of validation that you should be doing on files. Number one, file type validation. You should validate that the file type is the file type. Uh, well, you basically you shouldn't trust the file extension, which is provided in name. Right? The type parameter is figured out by the PHP server, I think. I could be wrong about that, actually. But um, the file type could be like a bash script or something, right? Like if the, if the, uh, if your um, attacker was trying to upload a bash script, 
Um, they might do so by calling it something else, right? So, but they might also just be trying to upload a bash script, right? So, and by the way, um, there is a uh, there's a um, a file in the uh, home directory of Unix accounts called uh, either dot profile or dot bash rc, which can be directed to automatically execute bash scripts based on their location, um, you know, anywhere in the server. So if you wanted to do something sneaky and have like a bash script executing on a server that you know the person didn't know about, right? It's certainly possible to do so. So file type validation then. So your type parameter will be mime types. So essentially, if you just write a simple little if statement to allow only those types of files that you want, that you're expecting, and exclude the rest, like you don't have to address every one of them specifically, but you can see plain, uh, text slash plain is one of them right there for plain text files. Um, yeah, you can see it's got all kinds of file extensions and maps them to all kinds of um, mime types. So, uh -huh. it doesn't matter if you're a .jpg with an E or a JPEG without the E. And the mime type you get mapped to a JPEG with the E. So, there you go. Lots and lots of these guys. So, let's say we wanted to modify this so that we were only accepting, um, you know, PNGs, JPEGs, and GIFs, for example. Now let's put her right. Switch on files at file one at type case image slash JPEG case image slash PNG. Case, image slash gif. Echo file type correct. Otherwise, our default um, echo file type incorrect. Exit zero. What does the zero indicate? Return status. Oh, okay. So um, it's a it's a it's a signal to the operating system. A non-zero uh, exit status normally means it indicates an error state. 
Now this is different from sending an error to the client. Like you can most of the time send an error to the client if the packet is malformed, but the program itself still fit, uh, exits, exits successfully, right? It's the program's doing what it's supposed to do. It's not producing an error, but it is sending errors to the client. Gotcha, gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes. So, for example, if we throw that in, if we select goose.jpg, submit that file, file type is correct and everything works. If I choose a different file, like my text file, submit that file, file type is incorrect. And then it just doesn't do it. Of course, in this case, it also doesn't display the, uh, the form. So you might want to handle that a bit more gracefully, but you know, good enough for now. Does that make sense? So we didn't go through what it's saying because the file wasn't correct. Correct. So is any good, anybody going to ask me about why there's uh, why there's only one break statement in this entire uh, this entire switch case? Because they just they all like the JPEG does they all do the same thing. Very good. You don't need to repeat the line. So in a switch case, when you enter at any point, you just continue until you hit a break. So this is a kind of a sneaky way of being able to do else, um, or sorry, not else. It's a sneaky way of being able to do logical or inside of a switch case. So it's like, if this thing matches JPEG or PNG or GIF, they all just execute this and break. Isn't there a name for it? It's like waterfall or something? Um, in a certain language, there's Cascade? Something. There was something fall. I don't know if it was called waterfall, but it was uh, like fall through or something. Fall through, yeah, I've heard fall yeah, through before. Yeah, yeah. Something of the sort. I remember learning that in Delta. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, you can put these all on the same line too. Let me see if that actually works. In which case it becomes even more compact. Yep, seems to work. Now here's a question. And you just put a comma in. Nope. We got so close, PHP. We got so close. <laughs> Screw right. language is right. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be that hard to do, but you know. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time and attention, folks. Um, a file example, basically this much has already been uploaded to the announcements feed, so uh, you have code. Um, any questions before we get out of here? Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Oh, do you have a question? Oh. End transmission.